light. And that, that is again about a particular kind of night out, which is a, a, essentially a, a, a lock-in, as far as I can see. Yes. A lock-in, everybody's around there, um, you know, there's a bit of coke taken, and people are leaving, making noises, full of the kind of like, I mean, you know, kind of screw you, we're having a great night out, we're, we're going for it. Um, and that kind of vin invincibility of it. I mean, that's the oldest song on the album, interestingly, and it's a song that Ben wrote. It's the only solo written song. That's just Ben, that one. And he, you wrote it about, I don't know, five, six years ago, and had demoed it, and I'd never heard it. He literally did a rough demo of it, and for some reason shelved it. And Why did you shelve it? Can you he remember? can't even remember. He's like, can you remember? I think it was when I was writing the songs for Storm Damage, um, and it was one of the early songs I wrote. And I think in my heart, I knew as soon as I finished writing the melody that it was one for Tracy. <laughs> Um, so like, darn it, I'm trying to write on that. Said that I never, he never even played it to me. So, I mean, he literally demoed it and I'd never heard it. So last summer we were going through this process of writing and one evening I said, you know, have either of us got anything older? And you said, well, I've got this demo on here of this song. I'd never heard it. Um, and I just went, oh, that's amazing. What the hell? <laughs> You're looking slightly gutted here, Ben. You're like, oh, it was going to be mine. It wasn't. Then I stole it. Wasn't. I stole it from him. Stole so it. Thinking, uh, <laughs> give me that song. I, I honestly think the the realization of it now is as good as I can imagine it being. So, I mean, that is very satisfying to me. Um, and the song, yes, I mean, it is about another side of Clubland. It's about, um, in particular, those kind of characters that you would meet often at the end of a night, um, the kind of dreamers, the resident DJ, um, the guy who thought if you could just have one big break, yeah. you know, that, that the world would be his. Yeah. And if it reminds me of any song in particular, it's um, a Bruce Springsteen song. <laughs> um, does, do you know that song on Born to Run, Meeting Across the River? Do you know that song, anyone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a few of you know that, which is a really amazing half-spoken, half-sung song about this guy who's got really one last chance and yeah. takes his mate with him across the river for the meeting mm. and they've got a gun in their pocket and they've got to put some money on the bed and it's, yeah. it's really, really evocative of, you know, the little guy with one big chance yeah. and I think I thought that Run the Red Light was a little bit like that. Yeah, because you're it's, it's, it's talking about like very specific things like the bar split. <laughs> Like how that's going to work. Such great lyrics to sing as well. Again, when you know, I looked at my thought, you know, this is lovely being given, you know, it's the bar to you know, <laughs> you know. It's good lyrics. Yeah, very good lyrics. Um, I wanted to talk about Lost, because that's a very, um, uh, a track that's very particularly moving. It, within the track, you talk about losing your mother, but it's actually kind of almost generated in a different way. Is that yeah. right? So Lost is a really odd one. So Ben wrote the first, the opening line, I lost my mind last week. And then he sat and typed into Google the phrase, I lost my, just out of curiosity to see what would pop up. <laughs> and wrote down all the things that people, you know, you get the suggested things. Every, yeah. You know, I lost my bags, I lost my job, I lost my thing, I lost yeah. da da da. And he just handed me this list of Oh, this is interesting. Look, this is what comes up when you type I lost my into Google. And we went, okay, that could be something. And he had, you'd created the track, hadn't you, the music? And I just started singing some of the lines over it, going, okay, well, this, this works. And then, you know, out of these kind of quite banal losses, in amongst them was the line, I lost my mother. Um, and I didn't really think about it. We didn't plan it particularly. I just we just sort of started working on it, and I started singing it. And as soon as I got to that line, I thought, oh, okay. And so then I think I repeated it twice. Um, yeah. And it just, I mean, it, even in the room while we were doing it, it just seemed to suddenly take on such a kind of odd power that this thing that came out of. You know, we didn't write that line specifically, yeah. it was just suggested to us, but you sing the line, I lost my mother, and that's going to be very moving. And it's, and then the juxtaposition of the lyrics seemed to conjure up something very true about loss, that while you lose your mother, 
you are probably also having to deal with everyday the everyday life. inconveniences yeah. that you lost your bag as well or something, you know, and it just seems so realistic. And then there's another whole vocal part that goes on, which I sang in the background, which is completely improvised. We have this idea of just doing this other vocal, which you can't really even quite hear. And I said to Ben, I'm not going to write the lyrics. We just, just turn the mic on and I'm just going to sing something. And I just kind of sang freeform. Um, and then they kind of weave in, in and out with each other. But, so again, it's a really odd mixture of like, you know, sort of forms of automatic writing, really, yeah. where again, you're trying not to write too consciously. You're trying to sort of access stuff that if you think too hard about it, you don't access. Yeah, it won't happen. Yeah. I mean, having said all that, so you, 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 you make the album, you, you, you decide maybe you're going to do it. You step up, you really decide you're going to go for it. How do you know when it's finished? Because you could, you know. You record nothing left to lose. Aha! <laughs> and you go. Okay. And yeah. you know, now it now. we're done. <laughs> I mean, honestly, we did that track and we went, yeah, we're finished. Totally, that's it, that's nailed it. We felt that so powerfully, I think. I mean, we didn't even, we didn't record another thing after that. We there, was, that there, was a, there was a sort of it. process of one-upmanship. I think yeah. once we picked up the gauntlet that was the challenge of making this record, um, I think the tempo started to pick up a little bit. Um, you know, we started to get more confident with the delivery and the grooves. The penultimate track we wrote was Caution to the Wind. Yeah. Um, and I think we thought that was the one. And then I remember listening back to it after a couple of days thinking, I think we can go one better. Nice, what a great feeling. Yeah. Um, and I thought I really wanted to do a track which had a very clear nod to our kind of 90s incarnation, but also did something that we hadn't done before. And I thought about it and I realised that it was a kind of beat and groove we'd never really gone near in the 90s. We'd worked with inspirations from drum and bass and from house, a little bit from hip hop, but that kind of two-step UK garage feel yeah. uh, was something we'd never gone near. Um, and I, I started with the beat, um, and then when I put on that kind of tremolo, um, Roland 808 bass in time with the track, I just thought it felt really fresh. Yeah. Um, and I really didn't want to put anything else on the track so everything else that goes on is really fragmentary yeah. Um, yeah. all the chords broken the, the chords are pared down there's one there's, actually there's one pad that plays through the chords but everything else is fragmented notes there's a huge amount of space and I just thought we're just going to put Tracy right in the middle there yeah, in the centre of the architecture. You can yeah. feel that when you hear it, actually. Yeah, there's so much space. I mean, honestly, it was a joy to sing. It's the easiest song to sing on the album. Literally just it sang itself, almost, because there's so much space. And, yeah. and did you know what you wanted to sing about when you heard the music? or Kind of, and then we had the lyric for a couple of days, and it was almost that lyric, but it was almost me like I was singing it about someone else. It was a little bit too detached. Um, and I do think we both had a realisation that, again, we're almost there, but it's not quite it. And I just had to rewrite it and kind of get right in the middle of it. Um, you know, instead of, you know, writing it a bit at arm's length. Um, get in it. And then you press, pray, and record. <laughs> done. Yeah. And then you like, done it. And it was done. done. It, was, it was quick, what that one, wasn't it? It really didn't... We, we didn't have anything for the outro. Um, oh, that's true. Yes, the outro bit. You'd given it to me on. You texted me some lyrics on. Yeah. Yeah. So Ben, every now and then we text each other lyric ideas. I think because we were trying not to do that thing of going, "Here are my new lyrics. Look at them in front of me," <laughs> which can be really stressful. Please don't judge so, me. So we would text each other ideas, going, "Have a look at this when I'm out." Um, and then you'd send me some lyrics and in amongst these few little odd bits of buried lyrics was the two lines, kiss me while the world decays, kiss me while the music plays, which I thought, okay, that's got to go somewhere. But we didn't know where to put them. And then they just oh, landed, went on the end of nothing left to lose. <laughs> 